verse 38. John 11, verse 38. We're reading from verses 38 through 45. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and the stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Hmm. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are not evil, and that you continually condescend to us in our lowest state, that you desire that we be reconciled to you, that you make yourself available to us in and through your word. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we would see Jesus today. Yes, Lord. We would see Jesus today, that we might be reminded, that we might be motivated and inspired to leave this place and to be more fully ambassadors of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Speak to us in and through your word today, Heavenly Father. We come against any unclean spirits, any spirits of Antichrist, any foul devils that would seek to prop up their ugly faces and spoil this fellowship. They have to go. Thank you. Because such is our desire to see Jesus. Such is our desire to be all you call us to be, Heavenly Father. If there be anything in me, Heavenly Father, anything that you can't use, I don't need it. I present myself as a living sacrifice unto you, that my thoughts are no longer mine but yours, my words no longer mine but yours, such that we are all edified, such that we all begin to take up the responsibility you've set before us from the foundation of the world to be perfect, to come into the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to use verses 38 through 45 to frame the message today, but the message will really deal with uh, the whole of John 11, starting from verse 1 and ending where we end um, before we pray, verse 45. Now I ask you to think with me uh, from, from this topic, the right time the right place, and the right reason. The right time, the right place, and the right reason. Again, the right time, the right place, and the right reason. I was, I was thinking about what I used to be, you know, as I was, I was thinking about this message which God did not really give me until last night and really didn't fully speak it until this morning. I was thinking about how often I, acting on my own impulses, with my own desires, with impure motives, set about to do what I thought was right, mm -hmm. not knowing how impossible my achieving or obtaining the right would be because of the impurity of the foundation. I, because I was proud and lustful, always thought that my time was the right time. And that no matter who was ready or not, I'd say what I had to say because it's the right time. Because I thought it was the right time, I could pick the place. And they'd be ready 
to hear exactly what I had to say, because such was the importance of what I had to say. Such was the importance of my opinions and, and my biases and prejudices. Mm. And I always thought that my reasons were pure because, well, they were my reasons. Mm. And whoever couldn't see that, well, they were just wrong. They lacked the wisdom to catch on to the point I was trying to make. Because they were ignorant, they never would latch on to the point I was trying to make. That's who I used to be. But oh, when I encountered Jesus, I, I discovered my wrongness. Mm -hmm. The wrongness that stemmed from the impurity of my own understanding. Mm -hmm. And how that fueled my choosing the wrong place for the wrong reason. Mm. Because I couldn't see, as God does, the beginning from the end. I wasn't trying to unite. I was trying to divide. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to love. I was operating in hate. Oh, and here we have in John 11 what many preachers have preached on and they said, well, they, they, they spent more time dealing with the fact that Jesus waited four days and all of that. But I, I, really, want to, I really want us to, to really ruminate, to really dawdle on how important, if we're going to be Christians who operate in the spirit of meekness, if we're going to be Christians who operate in love, the necessity with which we have to understand that the only way we can do things at the right time, at the right place, and for the right reason, is if we submitted ourselves to God. If we actively submitted ourselves to God in His perfect will. As, as we latch more fully onto the example, the express image of God's person that He gave us mm. in Jesus Christ. Mm. You know, the Greek philosopher Aristotle once said, to be angry is easy, but to be angry at the right person, at the right time, and for the right reason, this is difficult. We're going to explore the ways in which that, that quotation is wrong. I'm going to explore the ways in which that is right through the lens of Scripture. It's interesting to me, as we begin in, in John 11, verse 1. So now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Luke 10, we, 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 we're, we're first exposed to, to Mary and Martha. Jesus visits Bethany to do the work of the Lord. Martha is busying herself in the kitchen. She's more focused on doing what she believes she <coughs> has to do. And she starts complaining, Mary, why did you leave me alone? Hmm. And Jesus says to her in Luke 10, 38, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled by many things. But one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And that's what Martha was focused on, that one thing. Sitting at Jesus' feet. That one thing that, as Job tells us, we must esteem more than our necessary food. That one thing which leads to our being reconciled to God. That one thing. Okay. And Jesus closes out saying, and that one thing that she is going after, roped after, searching for, it shall not be taken away from her. That's the same Mary who in Matthew 26 and Mark 14 and later on in John, John chapter 12, who breaks open the alabaster box and anoints Jesus' feet with the spike knot, the oil, anticipating his burial. Hmm. It's one thing. If we're not operating from that mindset, that the word contains the truth by which we 